we're going to take a look at the second solution to the Jewish uh, problem as the Nazis were looking. Uh, so again, we, we ended with the first solution, um, the uh, kind of removal from society of Jewish uh, members. And this is where we'll kind of shift into the second gear, the second phase. Uh, and things from here on out are going to go pretty quickly. So uh, some numbers, all right, just to kind of, again, uh, put this all into context, okay? Um, now, Eastern Europe, okay? Uh, you have, we looked at this, about 500,000 Jews in Germany, 1%. But as World War II starts, Germany is going to move east through Europe. And as they move east, conquering nation after nation, they're going to uh, absorb and conquer nations that have larger Jewish populations. So Austria, 192,000. Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland is going to be the big one. And we talked about this in the beginning of the class where, you know, the, all of the death camps are located in Poland. Poland is the center of Jewish life in Europe, uh, kind of politically, culturally, um, and, you know, the European part of the Soviet Union has another 2.5 million, uh, Romania, okay? So we see with Nazi Germany, okay, starting off with, you know, not a very large Jewish population in Nazi Germany to having um, inherited, you know, millions of Jews, okay? So, again, for this, for this part of the notes, um, don't get bogged down with all the, with all the numbers, okay? Um, so the, the steps of the Nazi plan, uh, first solution, get them out of Germany, make it intolerable for them to live in Germany. Uh, the second solution, which we're going to look at is containment. So this is where, um, you start to have, uh, putting them in ghettos. Okay. Uh, and this will refer to as the second solution. And then the final solution is going to be annihilation. So again, you think about these steps, we've polarized, we've symbolized, we've dehumanized, we've organized, um, and now when we start to get to the um, removal from society, uh, annihilation and extermination can happen very quickly, okay? So, um, again, as uh, the Nazi war machine continues to go through Eastern Europe, uh, all of this is going to happen very quickly, okay? Now, again, as I said, I'm going to go through some German expansion. Uh, the main thing on this is two parts. One is Germany expands. The U.S., the rest of the world, does nothing to stop them, and they keep inheriting more Jewish uh, people, okay? So Germany expands with Austria. U.S., the rest of the world, does nothing. Almost 200,000 more Jews, okay? Now, same thing in the Sudetenland. It's an area uh, of Czechoslovakia, okay? 350,000 Jews are absorbed into the German Empire, okay? Uh, the United States... Uh, the rest of Europe does nothing, okay? And now this is where things will definitely make a drastic shift. So as Hitler and Germany invade Poland, September 1st, 1939, this is the official start of World War II in Europe, okay? Uh, Poland is completely overwhelmed by Hitler's Blitzkrieg, and 3 million Jews living in, in Poland are going to be inherited. And this is where they're going to have to make a switch in their policy because they can't just keep relocating them. They have to contain them uh, and figure something out, okay? So uh, by the end of 1939, uh, Hitler and Nazi Germany have inherited 3.5 million Jews. Now remember, they only had 500,000 Jews in pre-war Germany. They've already multiplied that by 700%, okay? So what they're gonna do is a policy of containment in the ghettos, all right? So immediately uh, as... Germany invades Poland, uh, they will, you know, force all Jews to wear the Star of David, and they will very quickly start to relocate the Jews that live in Poland by creating a system of ghettos, okay? So um, this idea of, here, here are the major ghettos, the, the largest cities, again, in Eastern Europe, okay? Uh, now, what is a ghetto? We, we hear that word uh, in movies, in music, uh, in the hallways, uh, the term ghetto actually originates from 500 years ago, okay? Uh, the, the, in Venice, Italy, in 1516, uh, basically the Venetian authorities 
made all of the Jewish residents live on a tiny island, okay, called Ghetto Nueva, all right? And they had to live it there at night. They couldn't leave when they wanted to, okay? And they had to wear this yellow uh, scarf or circle on their clothes. So you can see here's Venice. There's a bridge. Ghetto Nueva is this dirty, small, contained island. Um, so again, as we said in anti-Semitism, you know, Hitler is not inventing this stuff. This idea has been around forever. Anti-Semitism has been around forever. Um, you know, so again, this idea of ghetto is traced back 500 years uh, to something the Italians did with the Jewish population in Venice. Okay. So now, uh, as the Nazis invade Germany, or I'm sorry, the Nazis invade Poland, okay, they create the ghettos. Some are closed, some are open. Closed, you cannot leave. Open, you can leave to go to work, and then you report back. Again, if you do not uh, come back, then your family will be dealt with the punishment, okay? Uh, and they're considered these Jewish residential quarters, okay? Uh, as you move into the ghettos, all of your goods, your property is confiscated, and they're extremely crowded, okay? You have constant humiliation, fear of deportation, uh, a daily challenge, okay? Now, again, um, you have 8 to 15 people living in these small living quarters, okay? Um, now, you have rampant starvation, all right? Half a million dying from uh, disease, starvation. The overcrowding is just imaginable, unimaginable, okay? Um, serious public health problems. I mean, you see, you know, little, you know, children dying in, you know, in starvation and disease on the streets. Okay. Um, how they manage these ghettos, they had something called the Hudenrat. Okay. Uh, which would be these councils where they would put the Jewish elders in charge. Now, um, they are the ones, similar to the capos in the camps, they carry out the Nazi orders. So they would, the Nazis would go to the Hudenrat and say, we need 100 people for deportation. Okay. And they're the ones that give the list. Um, so they're kind of, again, kind of micromanaging the system uh, from the uh, top level. And we'll look at what would you do if you're in these situations uh, in class. Okay. Um, the uh, residents are given 300 calories a day. There's the ration card. That's about three tablespoons of butter. All right. And again, you're working uh, 12, 14, 16 hours a day uh, in these forced labor. Um, so, the Warsaw Ghetto, which we're going to spend a lot of our time looking at, uh, is the largest ghetto in Europe. Okay, you, They put 450,000 Jews in a two-mile area, two square mile. Okay, and We can talk about this in class, you know, how small that actually is. Uh, and when you put that in the landscape of uh, the city that we live in, um, it is almost, you can't even comprehend. Okay, One in 10 are dying from starvation. Okay, um, Now, how this worked... Okay, so Warsaw is the city, and then they're actually going to wall off a ghetto. Okay, so a lot of times kids think, oh, the Warsaw ghetto is all of Warsaw. No, it's just a tiny part of the city that's going to be walled off, and all the Jews in the area have to live in the ghetto. Okay, so um, with this, okay, the map, uh, it's a surrounding city. Okay, um, now the remaining wall, the Warsaw ghetto is still there. Uh, to this day, I mean, Warsaw is the capital uh, of Poland, the largest city in Poland, okay? Um, you can see uh, some of these pictures, you know, again, it's a modern uh, metropolitan city, and they still have kind of the remnants of the old ghetto system in Poland. I mean, this one even has uh, bullet holes on the, side of the, uh, on the side of the brick wall, okay? Um, you know, even some of the ghetto housing still, uh, still used today. Again, we're looking at 75 years old. Uh, 75 years later, you know, and even this, you know, it's kind of a living memorial in the big, in the middle of the city. I mean, you have, you know, uh, luxury apartments right connected to old ghetto housing. So again, this uh, uh, to try to never forget what happened um, to the people of Poland. Okay. Um, there's the bridge, which no longer exists today, uh, where there was two ghettos. Um, you can see here the larger one and then the smaller one connected by a bridge. There was a street rail car that went right through the middle of it. Okay. <clears throat> Again, smuggling in food, how you're going to eat, all right? Now, uh, as the war continues, they're going to look for other plans. Uh, the Nazis will look for other plans to try to um, uh, solve this Jewish problem as they look at it. One plan, the Madagascar plan. Let's put all Jews on Madagascar, 
and let them die out. Lublin, a major area in, in eastern uh, Poland. Let's just make one giant, um, you know, ghetto. Siberia. I mean, all these things end up being too costly, and eventually every single ghetto will be liquidated. And liquidated just means they are going to be completely... Um, uh, all of the people in there will be sent to concentration camps and killed, okay, or relocated, all right? So as the war turns, they need more labor. Um, they will move people from the ghettos to the camps. And again, a lot of these camps are slave labor camps. Um, and, you know, all of these ghettos will be liquidated uh, by the end of the war, okay, uh, either put into camps or just put into uh, concentration camps or death camps. So Treblinka, which is one of the major death camps that we'll look at, is right up the uh, right north of Warsaw. And most of the people that are in the Warsaw ghetto will be killed uh, at the Treblinka death camp. Okay. So as we as we turn to this final solution, now that the Jews are uh, removed from society and they are put into these ghettos, it's going to be much easier for the Nazis to uh, organize the final solution of extermination. All right. Have a good day, guys, and I will talk to you later.